Hello everyone, welcome to Fraser Not The Exorcist, and today I want to talk about why I think that The Adventures of Tintin is a timeless classic of a franchise. Um, although the only thing in the Tintin franchise that I haven't really experienced was the um, French movies, I think. I think they were in French or something like that. Uh, those and some of the like more side sort of comic books like the uh, Adventures of Herge and I think there are some other comic books in there I've kind of sprinkled in somewhere. So while I haven't seen like everything everything I've seen most of it and I've liked most of it and most of it has such a um, very unique quality I think uh, that I'd like to try and explain uh, throughout this video to basically give my ap appreciation to the Adventures of Tintin as a franchise. Now, uh, I guess the best place to start out would be like a story as to how I even discovered this thing because a lot of people have enjoyed this series. So this series ever since it came out back in like 1929 with the first issue, which was in uh, French, I think. Um, Belgian is not the language. Wait, does, does, does Belgium have their own language? Was it in Belgian? Pretty sure it was in French. Yeah, pretty sure it was in French. So, yeah, all, all, so, so all the way back in 1929. And then by 2007, it, it had sold like over like 200 million copies worldwide in, in a bunch of different languages. And it's loved by so many people. And it's, I'm just looking at it just looking at any sort at any Tintin property, you can clearly understand why why anyone would um, love it as as much as people do. Right. So for me personally, growing up like all the way up to the age of about 13, I never really had Internet. So my life as far as uh, having Tron, you know, as a kid, I, I, you know, I had a bunch of free time and stuff. So I either go I'd either go outside and, and play games out in the street or I would just stay in and read books and 90% uh, to about 95% of the time I chose to stay in with the books because uh, they brought me a lot more a lot more pleasure I just loved reading and and I just like you know just loved imagining the stories in my head and stuff like that so I spent a lot of time reading novels and stuff, and Tintin was the first comic book that I ever read, like ever, ever. I remember one time, uh, it, it was uh, Christmas, and I think I was about, uh, I, 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 like I wasn't even 10 yet. I think I was like around maybe like seven, seven or eight years old, and, and my dad bought me and my brother uh, Tintin. I think it's called Tintin in the Black Island, Tintin and the Black Island or something like that. Tintin, I think it's called Tintin the Black Island, but basically the Black Island one, right? He bought us that book for Christmas and we basically shared that one. I don't remember if 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 he gave us like something else for Christmas as well, but but uh, that, but that was definitely one of the presents. Uh, it was this Adventures of Tintin comic book. And at the time, we we knew nothing about Tintin. We we had never heard of heard of him. We you know only like you know only like uh, read comics in like newspapers and stuff like that. But then we finally got our first comic book, and it's this Tintin book, and it just captivated us to no end. It was just so adventurous. It was like and 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 it was in this book at the very start just you know not even being like nine years old yet and 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 even then i had i had realized and i'd understood what made tintin so popular and, and what made it so good overall and why it's like lasted all these years in in popularity and that's because of its like simplicity if it's sorry of its simplicity of its like it has this very simple, like simple, but not bare bones, you know, sort of uh, approach to the to the writing and 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 to the 
and and to the art style as well. Herge Herge is very distinct and and like just well thought out art style. You know, and 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 just like the overall themes and morals and stuff like that in 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 all the stories, it's very it's very universal and very like relatable to so to some extent because like looking at pretty much all the tintin stories there isn't anything that special about them like 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 nothing's really like profound or anything like that but it's just like simple fun it takes all of all of these like great elements and just combines them to make these great stories of mystery and thriller and uh action even slapstick comedy and and just you know and just good old like espionage and, and spies and reporters and stuff like that just traveling the world you know a bunch of stuff that people like to do and people like to experience and and and, and it's all found uh with these like a uh, cast of very memorable characters like like you know like captain haddock and professor calculus thompson and thompson you know and of course the uh opera singer i think her name is uh lady lady cassiari cassifar cassa something all right but you know th those are all memorable characters and and while they're like you know but they're but they're not thin exactly like that's the weird thing about tintin it's like it's it's in this perfect in this perfect area with 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 pretty much everything like like the characters aren't thin but but they're not like layered characters there isn't much to break down about them you can pretty much understand what they're about after after a few you know after a few pages basically you know but oh it's just a sim it's just like just simple fun it's just that's like like that's the best term I can find to kind of describe what 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 makes the adventures of Tintin so timeless. It's just simple fun. So uh, basically, after uh, the Black Island, you know, we and we just kept reading it over and over and over again, like in you know just and and that's and that's another thing about the Tintin franchise that that makes it so timeless. It's that it's instantly re-readable re and, and well when we get to the series you'll also you know or when I get to talking about the series it's also very rewatchable right like like I just we just found ourselves taking turns just reading the book over and over and over again and and it just sparked our our imaginations to the point where we even like created our like like our, our own Tintin-esque characters and, and, and our own Tintin-esque worlds and stuff like that and, and wrote our own little comic books together and stuff like that. Like, like it was really fun. It, you know, it's uh, really, you know, really, uh, really, it was really something special, I think, you know, just, just like reading those books for the first time and, and just doing it over and over and over again and, and it just never got tired it just it just kept being fun because it was it was simple like 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 you didn't have to think about it too much and you like like you just saw it and, and you understood what it was and you enjoyed it for 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 what it was and it was you know just really really good stuff Right. So after the Black Island, uh, a couple of years later, either about a year or a couple of years later, um, we 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 would get like multiple different Tintin comic books. I think in, in like in, in in all we had about uh, maybe four or five or six Tintin comic books that we came across, basically. You know, and 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 they were all basically the same amount of uh, enjoyable, basically like. They they all kept this consistent quality of simple fun, just simple goodness that just kept us coming back for more and more and more all the time. And it was just really, really fun. Uh I can't remember like the exact names of them. Like oh we had Tintin in America and uh I think we also had Tintin in the Congo as well. 
uh, and also the first um, the, the first book where they went to the moon. I think it's called Tintin in the Moon or Tintin Destination Moon or something like that. But but we had that book as well. All right. So uh, after getting the books and stuff, uh, we well pretty much like alongside the books right like almost right after we uh got the first our first tintin book uh tintin black island we got we were lucky enough to see uh reruns of the tintin animated series the the adventures of tintin on on tv on hbo the uh adventures of tintin series uh pretty much perfectly adapted the books. I'm, I'm not sure how many liberties they, they took from the books, um, but I'm sure they might have took uh, one or two liberties here and there, but but for the most part, they uh, stuck pretty close to it. You know, it ran for about three seasons, I think, in the, in, in the 90s, and and even today, it still holds up incredibly well. Like, like that theme song is just like, that theme song is just perfection. It's just amazing. It's 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 outstanding. It's just it's like it's amazing, basically. Like that theme that theme song. I don't know. Just something about Tintin just brings out the best in in just like whoever ad like adopts the work and stuff like that because it's just. You know, we we because like people always made like the right the, the right decisions. I think when they were um, ad, ad, adapting um Tintin media because that theme song was just amazing. All right, so the show, you know, like it's it, uh, basically followed the uh, stories of the comic books and did so very very well. And we enjoyed that a whole lot. Like you know, just like just everything about it was just perfect. The voice acting, the the animation, like pretty much exactly looked like the comic books, and it just and it just lit up our imaginations even more. Like that theme song just sticks in your head at just how good it is, and uh, I cannot recommend it more. It is amazing. Just every single episode. It was just amazing. It was it was just simple fun, just simple re rewatchable fun. Like just the it's it's the literal, like like you couldn't ask for a better adaptation than that. Of the comic books, that's basically all I have to say about that. Right. So right after that, um, as we uh you know kept getting Tintin books and stuff, well we didn't keep getting Tintin books as I said we only got about four or five or six of them in total and then we watched the series and but but of course that was more than enough just just even that one first book was more was just more than enough for us to fall in love with the character of Tintin and and, and to fall in love with with just the whole world that Tintin lived in uh, full of adventure and mystery and and, th and thrills and stuff like that so when we heard that there was going to be a Tintin animated movie done done in like in in, in the same style of the like the Paul of the Polar Express, you know, because back then we really liked the Polar. Well, if, even today we we still really like the Polar Express. Honestly, I I think that movie is a bit uh, on a bit underrated. Motion capture, animation. Uh, that they used for that movie was just uh, well, not the Polar Express. I'm talking about. I'm talking about the Adventures of uh, Tintin in 2011. When we saw that trailer on TV, we were just hyped beyond belief. We were ecstatic. We we just couldn't wait. And then when the movie finally came out and we got a chance to see it finally on DVD because, you know, we don't live close to any theaters, so we have to wait until it comes out on DVD. But, but when it came out on DVD and we finally watched it, it did not disappoint. It was amazing. Just like the show, it was amazing. Everything about it was amazing. It was, it was, <laughs> yeah, like this one took more um, significant liberties with the uh villain especially 
because I think in the comics, like the the uh, main villain that they chose to put, well, the guy that they chose to put as as the main villain in all of the story in um in the motion capture animation, you know, movie in twenty eleven, uh, that 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 is just a small character in in that book. I think it's what's it called again? Uh, Tintin, something something about a ship or something like that, right? But, um, yeah, but honestly, we couldn't, couldn't care less because the movie was just amazing. The voice acting, uh, what's his name again? Uh, Jimmy Bell. Jimmy Bell was perfect as Tintin, like, uh, the, what's his name again? The, the guy who plays the, the, the apes and stuff. Uh, Andy Serkis. Andy Serkis as Captain Haddock. Perfect casting. Could not have been any better. Everything was about that film was just amazing and we watched the uh, just just like the just just like we read the comic books over and over again just like we watched the tv show as much as possible over and over again we watched this movie over and over again right and and, and we were you know like really excited when we heard that it was going to get a sequel uh well that's been in development hell for like ever since then but uh you know hopefully someday they make a return to uh adapt one of the other stories uh but yeah it, it, it was it was just like it was like almost like they caught lightning in the bottle three times in a row with making the comic books and then making then making the uh animated show and then making the animated movie because they're all great they're all just it's it's like it's like it's weird because it's like uh it's like they really get the source material. They they really get the spirit of it. They really understand what makes Tintin so special, so timeless. It's just keeping things simple. There's no need to 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 to, to put any serious sort of nuance into it. Just just like universally, just pretty much universally accepted themes, right? Morals and all that. Uh, great, some great action, some great slapstick, some some great mystery, some great thrills, mixing in uh, a little bit of the supernatural in there, and, and and boom, you've got a you know perfectly serviceable, perfectly just pretty much just uh, perfect Tintin story right there, and, and and that's something that they all got right, and that's something that makes this franchise such a timeless classic because. They just get it. The people who are fans of it and, and, and make this media, they, they just get it. And that's something really rare that, that, I, that I really enjoyed. And that's pretty much all I have to say about uh, why I think that The Adventures of Tintin as a franchise as a whole is a timeless classic. So right now, I, I, I just want to know how, like, how do you feel about it? Do you do you think that I'm gassing it up a bit too much? Do you do you think that I should tone it down? Do you think that you know that it's not as great as I say? Please let me know in the comments below. Do you agree with me? Please let me know in the comments below. Uh, because this has been such a big part of my childhood. It's 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 etched in my memory. I can remember like literal panels in my head right now because it's such a great franchise. It's such simple. A, you know just simple addictive fun that i think can be enjoyed by all people uh now of course there is a bit of controversy surrounding the tintin franchise because uh of the um because like let's let's just say some of it hasn't aged that well but basically the the only thing the only problem that the franchise has i think uh has been in the very outdated um very outdated way that they represent minorities especially like just uh you know indians in uh in tintin in america the black people just everywhere anywhere especially uh, i think they were in like mostly in the, um you know tintin in, in 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 the congo i think and also what's it called again uh and, and well asians as well 
but just basically you know like uh, racial stereotypes uh, like black like black people as savages um uh, uh indians as you know you know stereotypical indians but uh that's that's pretty much the only aspect of that i can say that that you know is kind of like a like 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 a real problem or anything like that anything other than that and and, and uh, people basically have only good things to say about it and and i t and i totally agree with those and i love this franchise so much so i'd like to hear your thoughts in the comments below uh and that's basically it this has been first and not the exorcist and i'll see you guys next time god bless